Shikmi was quite close to gangsters, and hence the police cannot deny the case between Kowase and her linked together. Hence, Section 1 of the police department will be making a case on this, requesting Nagare to not intervene with their case and leave. In their car, Nagar was really hated and he assumed it was due to luck that he wasn't fired for rumors about abuse towards his family. Due to the rumors, his career was halted and he was loaded with a huge amount of work because he transferred positions. He remembered the time Maria came up to him asking for a divorce. He wanted to rebuild it, but she didn't believe it was possible to. He pondered about what happened meanwhile Maria left. He really wanted to know where his ex-wife was at this point of time. Maria sat down in a nice place with her breakfast and Kiritaka across from her. At the high school, Nagare was investigating the incident even though he was told to butt out. Atsugi knew what happened and blamed it upon himself for allowing the incident to occur. With no remorse, he told him he cannot change the past but can only accept the pain you have caused. The assistant of Nagare asked where he heard of this news, and the school nurse Akaboshi told him. He recognized that surname from the divorce papers, but there were thousands of people with that surname. Maybe he was just overthinking it. The inspector immediately asked where she was currently. He went to the infirmary, sliding the door slowly open. A beam of light passed through the window, and it was empty. She was on vacation and Atsugi could contact her later. Maria was pouring some scrambles onto Shikimi attempting to hide her. Three of them were left, and it was only impossible to predict what the students do during the summer. Her two targets were killed first because of their nature to run, but Okaya's gang would know what was going on. The last three wouldn't run, but instead plan a coordinated attack for vengeance and the police would be moving too. A challenge she would be more than proud of to take. One of Okaya's members was a slamming down a gang member down because they were too noisy. He wanted him to answer correctly because he was an adult, but they had no clue. He recognized how stupid Shikimi was, but she was his friend, he said while crying. Okaya came in and offered some ice cream. He slapped it away and asked why he was joking when their friend was just killed. Okaya asked if they should kill the victim in the heat of the moment. He wouldn't mind because it would make him happy, but this wouldn't fix the real revenge. It was his fault, and Okaya gave him a part of the popsicle. He recognized each other as friends, but was that really the case? Okaya's opinion was to not focus on the gangsters because Shikimi didn't know where Kawase went. Okaya knew resentment towards them was huge, but who would really do this? He believed was only Kiritaka's parents would. It's been a week since she has eliminated Shikimi, but a point of concern was still reminiscent. She remembered the time where Shikimi sent a gangster to kill her, but she didn't think she would. Now she had connections to that man, and if he was caught, she would be involved within the investigation. She withdrew a belt and wondered if she should end him, but her son told her that that man wasn't it. This made her realize she was about to make a mistake and he was right. Even if she couldn't kill him, she needed to remove points of concern. Ijima never went home and he might have ran away with fear of being exposed to the police. She went to the club with the intention of going to find Ijima. He would always go to the club to do deals, and she wanted to find him. She was approached by two dudes who had intentions, but her menacing aura caused them to fall down with fear. One of the goons, forgot his name, grabbed onto her shoulder and asked why she was at the club. She told him she was an adult capable of going, but he was a minor. He knew she wasn't the type to go to the club, and he knew after the incident with Shikimi she was the last one to talk to her. She knew it was out of self-righteousness that he said these ideas. It would be dangerous if she gave a straight answer and a lie was risky. He was mad asking if she was even listening. A tear started to stream down her face and she told him it was her fault. Maria just wanted to teach Shikimi a few things, but she took it as a misunderstanding. What she told him was, if this goes on, you will become very miserable. She didn't realize her words hurt and if she phrased it differently, Shikimi wouldn't have, but she was cut off. He was sorry and knew she was just looking out for the both of them. She learned he only said it off of pure instincts and tried to wipe her tears. She attempted to pry if he knew where she was, but he wouldn't buff her. She started to get a little aggressive and asked if he really knew something. She wanted to find her and Kawase with him, but he wasn't looking at her. Instead, his eyes drifted saying, Iljima. He drop-kicked him from the top ropes. He sat on him grabbing onto his hair. 
He was mad because they had similar hairstyles but not the same person. She grabbed onto his arm telling him, violence was bad. He was sobbing that she was already killed and his last resolve was to kill the killer. Kanugawa was enraged and no one could stop him when mad. Some big guy tried to tell him what would happen if he fought. A kick to the face was what happened to that big guy. If what happened persisted, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary if someone called the police. Instead, someone shouted they were the police and pushed through the crowd. Kinugawa dashed away and Nagare was right behind. Someone tripped him, making him fall, telling him not to intervene. He didn't want to let him go, and the one who suffered wasn't even hurt. In her cottage far away, she was in the shower wondering why he was there. It wasn't a coincidence they were together investigating. She realized he was going to get in on her master plan. In her shabby washroom, the news reported a body was found in a mountain. The body belonged to Iljima, and it was believed homicide was the reason he died. Investigation learned it was a week ago since he died, and a week ago he was seen on camera. Their investigation was going decently well, being able to narrow down when he died and some suspects. He wanted his assistant to go to the town and thoroughly investigate what happened. At school, Maria was cleaning the principal's ears and was in deep thoughts. Iljima should have been alive, and from the reactions of Kinugawa, they weren't the culprit. She wondered if the culprit may have known her. The principal asked if she was tired and she didn't think she was. The principal suggested some alone time with each other, but her mind made it seem like it was her ex-husband there. She stabbed his ear and looked down at him with hatred. She put on her coat and knew it was too late to turn back. Looking at the window, her past self-reflection started to appear. She wanted her cowardly self to disappear while leaving. Kinugawa was beating up a machine, and they thought Kinugawa would find him first. The method was crude, and a good thought it was a separate matter, but Okaya thought otherwise. An accomplice was thought of the answer, and would have erased their traces by crushing their bones and burning them. Okaya assumed they were an amateur because of how half-assed they buried the body, and it was near a roadway. It would be bad if it was someone who knew what they were doing, but they wouldn't want to get caught by the police if their target was them. She was theorizing what and why someone would kill him. The culprit knew about her revenge and relationship and decided to conceal their identity. She was sure that they would come and reveal their identity to her later. Maria was greeted by someone she saved before asking for her time. She was sweating profusely, and Maria let her take the day off, but she refused. She was ready to confess something that she was holding in for a while. She revealed she was there when Kawase disappeared, but Maria wondered if she was spotted. Whether or not she knew about the things she has done, Terrified of being a suspect, she didn't report it to the police because of fear. She let her hug herself, and with a grin told her this should be a secret between each other. The girl kept confessing about things she had done that she shouldn't have. She believed Maria was kind, and Maria told her she already paid the price of it. It was obvious she was changed because of these incidents. If one were a victim, killing wouldn't be far off either. A cashier was asking if they had a points card and explained the process. But the poor dude wasn't paying attention. He shouted he didn't get points, and he sheepishly said he explained it. The guy started to beef, and then a quick knife to his throat. But this was all in imagination, and he apologized. He was approached by Maria asking about the Iljima incident. She wanted to be informed about the incident that ensued. She was talking to former student of St. Spring Middle School, Yuta Akahiro. In a vehicle, Nagare wondered why she knew it was him. She knew that no one else would have benefited from the murder other than herself. She then told him his diary talked about a person named Yuta. Even though he was supposed to have dropped out, he was spotted with his uniform. This somehow let her simplify that it was him. He was amazed by how intelligent she was, and she was concerned about why he was doing this. He was imagining himself and Kiritaka, and he was ready to do their homework together. He saw the bruise on Nagari, and he told him he should run away. His reasoning for not running was to aspire as a detective to catch bad people like them. But Nagari wasn't going to run like a little girl. At Nagari's funeral, he was stunned not doing anything, but Okaya approached him. He was asked why do you think he died, 
and emotions were scattered. He fell onto his knees sobbing about what he had done. He couldn't run away, but still ran away further and further. Every day was practice on insects and he had sights on his first target, Kawase. He certainly had an idea of a gruesome death he'll give to Kawase. He was frightened the day of wanting to do homicide, but Maria came through the darkness and was entering the house. He would follow her to the cathedral to see Kowase's death within her arms. He had a view that she was truly a god for punishing them. He wanted to see her again in action, thus finding where she did her operations. Looking up to his friend, he realized his fate was soon to be destiny instead. From that day he decided to follow her and help with everything she's done. He saw she let Iljima live and thought this was a test for him. He was bestowed with the quest and tried to attack him with a hammer. He ducked down to tie his shoelaces, making Yuta miss. Iljima realized what Yuta was doing with horror on his face. Yuta let out a scream of frustration and effort before attacking with his hammer. Iljima tried to block it with his arms, but he kept striking. He was going to ask for his identity, but he slipped on the stairs. He imagined Okaya's face at the bottom of the stairs while he was at the top. That was the story of how he committed that act and his goal was to be included in Maria's plans, as this would be his redemption for Kiritaka. Maria pulled out her phone and started to play the recording of him confessing. She told him it would have been easy to make him the culprit of the crime now. She wanted him to get out, but the dude was persistent. She was anxious thinking if she had murder intent what would have happened. She didn't want to involve the child which her son saved. Yuta over here had a devil's smile of a devil with lots of intention, and I mean lots. At Nagar's lovely home, Kinugawa broke in smashing a window. He was recording the inside of the building mentioning it was a mess. Kinugawa told Okaya that he would be looking into this issue because they wanted them dead. On the night with the summer festival he would break in because the police would be busy. It was only a possibility, but that was enough for Kinugawa to attempt it. He didn't want to cause trouble, and Okaya didn't want him to suggest something so scary. He realized the father really got a divorce, and what's left was to find the evidence to bring him to jail. Yuta was standing from a far capturing. What was happening? He was going to send it to Maria's email. He wanted to show his value in order to be part of her plan. But as all goes wrong, the investigator was ready to go back home.